Hey everybody, how's it going? Happy Tuesday morning. We've got more 2021 Seahawks predictions today. So yesterday we talked about the top five players who I think will improve the most for the Seahawks in 2021. Uh, the guys who, for one reason or another, had holes in their game or were maybe not very productive at all in 2020, who I think are going to take that big step forward in 2021. Today is kind of similar, but the premise is just a little bit different. Today we're going to be taking a look at three players who I, after putting some thought into it and analyzing what I've heard from the team so far, I think are going to come out of nowhere to make positive contributions for this team. So players who were considered unlikely to make the team, players who a lot of people may not even really know about at all, even fans of the own team, uh, of of uh, fans of the team, and certainly fans of other teams maybe aren't even aware that this player exists. You guys get what I'm getting at here. I think um, these are just players who I think a lot of people are just assuming we're not going to see anything from in 2020. But as I hear things from training camp, um, I'm, I'm believing that these three guys are going to kind of come out of nowhere, and maybe they don't belong on a fantasy football squad but they're going to help this team win a lot more than people expect. Now, obviously, when I say players that are going to come out of nowhere, I'm not really talking about people on this channel, because if you watch my videos, you probably know these players really well, and you're probably familiar with what has been said about them in the offseason so far. You're probably familiar with what they've been doing at training camp. So I'm not really talking about you guys not expecting these guys to be good. Um, you guys follow this team really closely for the most part, like I do. If you watch my videos, you're following the team somewhat closely. But the average fan is, in my experience, not really thinking about these players. And I think the average fans of other teams haven't even heard of these players. So with that in mind, let's take a look at surprise sleeper number three, Penny Hart. So... <clears throat> there's some interesting stuff happening with the Seahawks at wide receiver right now. We know we have DK and we know we have Tyler, but it's starting to look like there might be a bit of a scrum behind those two. Eskridge was going to be the guy, but he hasn't really been able to practice yet because of the toe, and we don't know what's going on there right now. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be okay, but <clears throat> I can't say that with any confidence yet. Freddie Swain is still there. He was there last year, but... I think he could really go either way. I don't see anything with him that stands out to me as somebody who's definitely going to be an NFL-level contributor going forward. You've got guys like John Ursua, who I kind of don't believe in, but <clears throat> we'll, we'll see. Aaron Fuller, who I liked. I'm starting to kind of lose my interest in him now because he's been on the team for a little bit now, and I haven't heard a thing about him. Um, one or two other guys, but the one guy whose name keeps coming up in this scrum of late depth chart receivers is Penny Hart. Him and Wilson have a great report, supposedly, in practice and training camp. They love to work together. Penny Hart has great speed that for some reason did not translate at the combine. He ran like a 4'6". And when you put him in football pads, it seems like he runs a good deal faster than that. He's got good speed. Um, so far in his career, which is really only 2020 as far as the Seahawks are concerned, he has one catch for three yards and one rushing attempt for 19 yards. So not a whole lot going on here. Uh, I think he drew a PI flag last year without, for a big play, but in terms of actual NFL production, it's very thin. So it would not take a lot for him to make a, an improvement over 2020. Now... Because we do have a lot of good pass catchers on this team who are going to demand the ball more than Penny and are better than Penny, I don't think Penny Hart's going to have some monster uh, season. I, I don't think he's going to have like 50 catches. I don't think he's going to have 40 catches. I don't think he's going to have 700 yards. Uh, and I kind of hope he doesn't because that would indicate that the guys in front of him are either not good or got hurt. But I think Penny Hart can have like 20 catches this year and probably some work on end arounds too. So let's say something like 20 to 25 touches for 300 plus yards. I don't know exactly how to project these numbers out because some of it depends on what happens with Eskridge, right? If Eskridge plays all year, 
Hart's opportunities are going to be more limited if Eskridge doesn't play for at least part of the year, Hart gets more opportunities. But I think Penny Hart will be a not crucial part of this offense, but he will be a contributing part to this offense in 2021. So I say put him down for about 25 touches for 350 yards, and we'll see where that lands at the end. So he's my number three. All right, number two. Trey Flowers. So it's a little bit of a misnomer to say that Trey Flowers is a sleeper because even casual Seahawks fans kind of know who this guy is. They've heard his name. They know he's on the team. He's been playing a lot for the last three years. He's not really a true sleeper. But in my experience, most Seahawks fans are completely out on this guy. They are done with Trey Flowers. They think that he's bad. They think that he's just going to run out the last year of his rookie deal and then leave the NFL never to return. I kind of felt like that was probably accurate, but I'm going to go ahead and bet on some of the stuff I've heard coming out of camp and the uh, scrimmage game that say that Trey Flowers is playing much better this year. We all know that Trey Flowers had a very rough go of it last year. Um, the numbers really speak for themselves. He got hurt and missed a few games, and when he did play, I mean, some of the numbers look passable, but he has two pass deflections on 71 targets. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that is not good for a cornerback. You should be getting more than one pass breakup per 35 targets. And by the way, one of those pass breakups, I think, was caught. It was the Michael Gallup play. If that counts, then... That qualified as a reception, despite him breaking up the pass nominally. Nevertheless, in the second half of the season, Trey Flowers got a lot better. He did. He didn't make plays, which was frustrating because that was one thing he was doing pretty well in 2019. It seemed like he was developing in that regard. He was making plays on the ball, but he did decently. He wasn't getting beat over the top anymore. He wasn't giving up huge plays. He did a pretty good job on DeAndre Hopkins. He was playing better. It just wasn't that noticeable. So I think a lot of people just assumed he was still the guy who was getting beaten badly in the first half of the year because when he did bounce back a little bit, it wasn't loudly. It was very quietly. He was just somebody who At least you didn't get mad at him for screwing up because he stopped screwing up and just started kind of sort of doing his job adequately. So I'm going to say he builds on that in 2021. I'm going to say he has a year where he gets a couple interceptions, uh, makes a couple plays on the ball this year. Uh, Let's say he gets his, if he gets on the field, and by the way, there's no guarantee of that. There are a lot of cornerbacks competing for playing time on this team, but I'm going to say he makes a few more plays on the ball per target, like maybe he can, you know, get three pass breakups on 45 targets this year. That would be a big improvement. Even though that doesn't sound amazing, it would be a big improvement. So I'm going to say that Trey Flowers, with all the hullabaloo around our cornerback position going into the season, is going to get some playing time, and I think he's going to improve from his dismal 2020. All right, that was number two. On to number one. Robert Kemdichi. Yeah, we're buying into the hype. We are chomping down hard on that hype. I want to believe. So, Robert Kemdichi is not a sleeper that nobody's ever heard of before. But to think that he would have a meaningful NFL moment in his future seems a little silly, even now. And it seemed very silly a couple months ago. Robert Kimdichie was a first-round pick in, I think, 2016. But since then, he's had one notable season, 2018, for a terrible Arizona team. He actually was able to contribute four and a half sacks, 32 tackles, nine tackles for loss. Seemed like he was starting to turn into somebody. And then he found himself off the team the next year, spent a little bit of time in Miami, and then was out of the league in 2020. This was a guy who looked like he was done in the NFL. This guy looked like a first-page bust. This guy looked like it was just one of the, you can't call it the worst picks ever because he was a late first-rounder, but it was a terrible pick. And he was done. Never to be heard from again in the NFL. Selling insurance door-to-door or something. 
And then we signed him right before the draft, and it didn't seem like it was that big of a deal. And then he started to play well in camp, and the coaches and players kept noting how good he looked and how much fun he was having. And then it seemed like there was some sort of room in our interior defensive line for him to maybe actually get snaps. And then the NFL expanded their practice squad rules a little bit so he could at least fit on there. And now I'm starting to kind of think that this could be a reclamation project that actually produces some results. Um, The Seahawks have Puna Ford at defensive tackle, and we know he's good and we gave him some money. But other than that, it's not clear what we have. Brian Monet is okay, but very, very small sample size with him. LJ Collier, I think, can be good, but I don't know if he can be good consistently over a 17-game season playing inside. That's a different that's a different problem to tackle, and it doesn't seem like Rasheem Green's really going to be playing on the interior that much this year. It, it's Al Woods is what he is. He's a you know fat tack, run stuffing defensive tackle. He's fine, but it's it's not clear what we have there. So suddenly there's room for Robert Kimdichie, and I'm gonna say he actually plays this year and he contributes. I'm going to say he gives us something like three sacks and 25 tackles, uh, six or seven for loss. It it could be more if he plays more, but I'm going to go with that for now. I'm going to say he gets on the field enough to do that. It's a little bold, but the more I think about it, the more I'm starting to feel like it's going to happen. So that's my number one pick for a sleeper Seahawk this year. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'm going to get out of here. Peace out. Go Hawks. Penny Hart, Trey Flowers, Robert Kimdichie, surprise us. Well, you won't be surprising me because I'm predicting it right now, but surprise these other people.